chapter Amen. 3. Amen. I believe in the insurrection. Chapter 3 begins with a story. In a world where following Christ is decreed to be a subversive and illegal activity, you have been accused of being a believer, arrested and dragged before a court. You have been under clandestine surveillance for some time now, and so the prosecution has been able to build up quite a case against you. They begin the trial by offering the judge dozens of photographs that show you attending church meetings, <laughs> speaking at religious events, and participating in various prayer and worship services. After this, they present a selection of items that have been confiscated from your home. Religious books that you own, worship CDs and other Christian artifacts. Then they step up the pace by displaying many of the poems, pieces of prose and journal entries that you have lovingly written concerning your faith. Finally, in closing, the prosecution offers your Bible to the judge. This is a well-worn book with scribbles, notes, drawings and underlinings throughout. Evidence, if it were needed, that you had read and reread this sacred book many times. Throughout the case, you have been sitting silently in fear and trembling. You know deep in your heart that with the large body of evidence that has been amassed against you by the prosecution, you face the possibility of a long imprisonment or even execution. At various times throughout the proceedings, you have lost all confidence and have been on the verge of standing up and denying your Christ. But while this thought has plagued your mind throughout the trial, you resist the temptation and remain focused. Once the prosecution has finished presenting their case, the judge proceeds to ask if you have anything to add. But you remain silent and resolute, terrified that if you open your mouth even for a moment, you might deny the charges made against you. Like Christ, you remain silent before your accusers. And in response, in response, you are led away to wait as the judge ponders your case. Well, the hours pass slowly as you sit under guard in the foyer, waiting to be summoned back. But eventually, a young man in uniform appears and leads you into the courtroom so that you may hear word of your verdict and receive word of your punishment. Once you have been seated in the dock, the judge, a harsh and unyielding man, enters the room, stands before you, looks deep into your eyes, and begins to speak. Of the charges that have been brought forward, I find the accused not guilty. Not guilty? Your heart freezes. Then, in a split second, the fear and terror that had moments before threatened to strip your resolve are swallowed up by confusion and rage. Despite the surroundings, you stand defiantly before the judge and demand that he give an account concerning why you're innocent of the charges in light of all the evidence. What about the poems and the prose that I wrote, you reply? They simply show that you think of yourself as a poet. Nothing more. But what about the services I spoke at, the times I wept in church, and the long, sleepless nights of prayer? Evidence that you are a good speaker and actor, nothing more, replied the judge. It is obvious that you deluded those around you, and perhaps at times you even deluded yourself. But this foolishness is not enough to convict you in a court of law. But this is madness, you say. It would seem that no evidence would convince you. Not so, replies the judge, as if informing you of a great long forgotten secret. The court is indifferent towards your Bible reading and your church attendance. It has no concern for worship with words and a pen. Continue to develop your theology and use it to paint pictures of love. We have no interest in such armchair artists who spend their time creating images of a better world. We exist only for those who would lay down that brush and their life in a Christ-like endeavor to create it. So then, until you have lived like Christ and his followers, until you're prepared to give yourself over to the flames, 
until you are ready to stand against this system. Until then, my friend, you are no enemy of ours. But now I'm too long. 